Neonic Void Productions presents Okay, um, we'll keep okay, it rolling. Okay. Welcome to Spookocalypse. I am your host, Bunyip, and I'm joined here with Zio and Housekeeper. How do you do? And that's on per. Her. Hello. Her. 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 You're done. You're done. Hi, welcome to Spook. Uh, we're continuing on with the month of A24. Let's jump right into the mix. Housekeeper, take it away. If you like this podcast, make sure you follow and rate us on whatever site you listen to your podcast. Share with your friends. New episodes get uploaded every Saturday. Links are down in the description for other podcasts that are part of the Neonic family. Follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Spookocalypse. That's at S-P-O-O-K-O-C-A-L-Y-P-S-E. And we are also on YouTube. If you are from YouTube, hi, hello, welcome. Make sure you check out um all of our other shows that are on the channel. Make sure you drop a like, share the video, subscribe, tickle, or punch the bell. I don't care, whatever your fancy is. And, you know, drop a comment on your favorite part of the movie, uh, who your favorite character was, um, or, you know, if there's something that you want us to review, drop down that, and, or if you're just going to say hi, we don't bite. Um, we do some spooky shit um, every once in a while, I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> mints will be on the pillow. And today's for a mint is... Pork. I was about pork to say like pork flavored pork, pork. yuck <laughs> moldy pork uh, Maggot. yes maggots but but maggots disgusting <laughs> disgusting so uh Bunyip tell us about Pearl an extraordinary origin story the production history okay. so this one is directed by Ty West, written by Ty West and Mia Goth. Um, it is produced by Jacob Jaffke, Ty West, Kevin Turin, and Harrison Crace. And it's also starring Mia Goth, David Cornsweat, Tandy Wright, Matthew Sunderland, Emma Jenkins Pirro, and Alistair Sewell. And it is produced by Little Lamb and Mad Solar Productions. And distributed by A24. It was released in the United States on September 16th, 2022. And it made about $10 million at the box office on a budget of $1 million, which it shared with X. Yeah. I mean, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, you most certainly did not. So... This movie was obviously co-written by uh, Mia Goth, who plays Pearl and Maxine, as well as the... So he wrote the movie with the director. They worked on a um, a prequel script while from the collaboration while filming X. So they actually made the script while they were filming X. Apparently. I'm like, damn, they really went... They really went all in, and they were motivated by the impact of the um, uh, Miss Rona uh, pandemic on cinema during that time period. And they started filming the movie in New Zealand immediately after the first film using X sets and the Avatar The Way of Water crew for the movie. Like, what? What? So imagine you're on you're part of the crew of the way of Avatar the Way of Water for the second Avatar film. And they're like, yeah, we finished filming. Cool. Um, do y'all want to go work on Pearl? 
a horror movie? Girl, bet. Let's go. And then they, while filming it, they also took heavy precautions uh, during the during the pandemic. So they took so they took like heavy safety precautions, which makes sense because the movie takes place during the time of the influenza pandemic, or at that time period known as the Spanish. Yep, it's nineteen eighteen, and I think there's a moment like you see it in the newspaper, but <laughs> Pearl points out. Yeah. <gasps> the French are winning the war or something like that. Like the, the focus is on world war one, but they completely <laughs> gloss over the main headline, which is like the Spanish flu, as it was referred to as back then, the 1918 flu is ravaging the nation. Right. So Pearl obviously draws inspiration from the wizard of Oz and other technicolor films from like Mary Poppins and other Disney films. So the the ver- it's very stylized. It's like the opposite as far as X. It's very vibrant and colorful compared to its predecessor. For the one that got released, for the predecessor that got released anyway. Um. Now, we'll get into this movie. Now this takes place eons before X ever did, because X started in 1979. This movie starts in 1918 during the influence of pandemic. Or the Spanish flu as they knew it knew it at that time. Pearl is a young woman that lives in lives on a farm with her German immigrant parents in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, Texas. Same place, same house, same barn. Howard is all fighting in World War One. Pearl's father is uh, paralyzed. While her mother, Ruth, uh, insists that she help take care of the farm as well as her father. Um, Her mother, gosh, how do I describe Pearl's mother? More like a Disney stepmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Exactly. That and the fact of like how Pearl came out to be. I'm not surprised. Her mother's kind of horrible in some ways. A little bit. A little bit. She's kind of horrible. <laughs> um, From obviously taking care of her father and helping her mom, t- her mother take care of the farm while her husband's off at war, Pearl is longing for a more exciting life and she feels stuck and like stuck at this farm and she wants a much better life. She's captivated by the films of cinema that she secretly sees without her parents, without her mom knowing. And she wants to be um, on local cinema. And she aspires to be a chorus girl, which her mother obviously disapproves of. However, Pearl, Pearl, you start seeing so like in the very, very beginning of the film, you kind of feel kind of feel for Pearl a little bit. She's like, wow, Pearl, before she became a serial killer, gosh, she must she's such a sweet girl. Gosh, she just wants a better life. And then she kills a goose. Start seeing that there's a little, little there's a little bit of crazy in there. Yeah. The goose just shows up, I guess, seemingly interrupting her special routine. And it's like, what are you doing here, Mr. Goose? Yeah. And the and the music changes. <laughs> and you're like, why? Yes. Why did the music change? Fur, what are you going to do? Fur, what are you doing with that pitchfork? Why is the camera focusing on just... <laughs> why is the camera only focusing doing? on you right now? And it's at a downward angle. It's looking up. <laughs> what are you doing with that pitchfork, Pearl? Is that the same pitchfork you kept for decades and you stabbed a guy in the eye? Yes. And she, she sticks <laughs> yes. this goose and you hear it's you hear its loud squawk like no. <laughs> we were okay, so story time. I was again, I was watching this movie with some friends with Kaiju Groupie and our other friend Cordelia. I was here too. I was as there she too. is named. No, I'm talking about when I watched this movie's last night with uh Kaiju Groupie and oh. Friends, we were at we were at the house, oh. and I was I looked at Kaiju Groupie and I'm like, girl, Pearl is so crazy. Your cousin would would want to be with her, oh, because Indigo loves crazy. Yeah, you're right. 
he has a thing with crazy. And I'm like, damn, he, and guy your group, he's like, you right. He probably would. Well, wait a minute because Pearl. he went to the movie. He went to the movie. He with did. Us. He did. He did. But we never asked him. No, he I hated did, I didn't it. Know at the time. He hated it. He hated Pearl. Yes. He thought like it was boring. Lies and slander, false truths. No, he said like it was boring. He didn't like the whole monologue. I know. I, I know. I, I know. And I'm, that's why I'm like, lies, slander, false truths. This movie's amazing. And honestly, spoiler alert, I like this more than X. Personally. A little more than X. Anyway. Crazy. She's a psycho. So between psycho killer. killing animals and physically abusing her father in some ways, like pinching him and randomly having him in the bathroom when she's in the tub talking to him and she I don't think she quite understands. She seems like she's 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 a girl and so at some points in this movie you feel you do feel bad for Pearl. You do. And then she does something crazy and you're like, "Girl, you're missing a few marbles." So she's a psycho. And Pearl likes to go to this particular theater in town when she ventures off into town to get whatever, medicine, food, whatever errands that her mom wants her to do. She, meet, she falls in love with this young projectionist who takes a liking to her. Now this, project, now this uh, projectionist is played by uh, David Sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this man this man is going to be the new Superman, if you didn't know. I didn't know. You didn't know, now you do. He, he's playing Clark Kent, and he honestly kind of looks like Clark Kent. I was like, get a girl. He cute. He cute. He's like Ryan Murphy, white boy cute. Because if you didn't know, he was also American Horror Story and some other projects Ryan Murphy, so Ryan, Mur Ryan Murphy has a type. Whatever. She's liking to him. She's she didn't ride her bicycle home and she stops along a cornfield and sees a scarecrow. She starts dancing with the stare with the scarecrow. And then she starts fantasizing about the scarecrow being the projectionist. And then she um Did we mention that she was already married? Yeah. Oh no, I did. Yeah, yeah. she was already married to she Howard. Oh yeah. Like she throws oh, yeah. scarecrow down. Like, hey, I'm married. Mm -hmm. But I'm since married. there's no witnesses, <laughs> keep it. It'll be our little secret. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she uh gets uh, freaky with the scarecrow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And eventually, when she does get home, her mother realizes that um, she's like, "Where have you been?" She's like, "Oh, it just it took a little longer to get home." Where's where'd you get that hat? Oh, I found it on the side of the road. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. You showed the scare. You gave you showed the scarecrow why he has a real heart. And uh -huh, you took his okay. hat. You took his hat. No, actually, no. You blew the scarecrow's brains out. Let's be real. Scarecrow was the brains. The Tin Man was the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she and Pearl's the Wicked Witch of the West. And her mom's like, well, leave the head outside because it might have germs. And I'm just like, but you're German. That's. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> That's it racist. Here. No, it's just not <laughs> clever. That's I racist. <laughs> You're only saying that because you're German. You're because German. I, have, I have German. <laughs> <laughs> that German ass last name of Fuck yours. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't choose this last name. I didn't choose it. <laughs> but your ancestors did get blamed for World War One. <laughs> Bitch, they got blamed for World War Two as well. The fuck. Well, they started. Well, they started World War Two. They didn't start World War One anyway. <laughs> <laughs> jokes on you my german side of the family doesn't even acknowledge that we're alive 
Yeah, they don't think that what? we're real Germans because we weren't born in Germany. Like, oh you're not God. part of the family. You may have the same name, but you're not part of the family. And I'm like, you're dumb. Anyway. <laughs> you're dumb. I'm leaving out of the will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I have money? No, you're still not my... No, no. We're not family member. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, like, you get a bunch of wealth. Like, you can buy your hair did you want. And you're like, are you serious? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so the so the mama is like, cool. Uh, where's the money that I gave you to get to get this meds and shit? And she's like, cool. Gives him the money. She realizes, um, there is eight cents missing from your errand, Pearl. And Pearl's like, ah, I bought some candy on the way back. It's a long trip. And her mama and her mom's like, ha, no supper for you. She's like, literally like, hug? no soup for you. Pretty much. Go to bed. And I'm like, damn, mama, shit. She was like, you're done. Go well, to bed, you're then, done. like, Pearl's about to get up and leave. He's like, where are you going? It's like, well, seeing that I can't eat, I might as well go to sleep. And I was like, no, I didn't give you permission to leave. You're going to sit down. And you're going to watch me eat what yeah. you don't get to eat. <laughs> That's fucked up. And I'm like, y'all have, have a no one have like a big fucked. cauldron of soup. She can't have like one bowl. No, that's some fucked up shit. <laughs> so next day comes around. Pearl's working in the barn with the animals and shit, putting on a show. God knows what. And her sister in law Misty comes by with her with her mother in law. And her mother, they bring a uh, pig to the house to offer it to Pearl and her mother. And her mother, being the proud, proud woman she is, does not accept it and just leaves and it outside. Record, this isn't a live pig. It's it's a it's a cooked pig in a in like it's a, a cooked pig, a pan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Misty, then, uh, while this is happening, Misty tell, starts telling Pearl about an audition for, to find new dancers for a traveling troupe. And of course, Pearl is seeing this as a potential way to get away from the farm. She's like, I gotta do this. And of course, the stuff happens with her mother. She leaves the pig out in the fucking porch, just a rot. And because her mother's a proud woman. And then after the sun, go, after later on, she sneaks out in the dead of night, Pearl, and she visits the projectionist who shows her a movie called A Free Ride, which is also known as a grass sandwich, it is a silent film, but it is the considered the earliest American hard, quote unquote hardcore pornography. Pornographic. Oh no, I get why they call it that. Uh-huh, because they do it uh-huh, in the outdoors yeah. on the grass. No, mm-hmm. no picnic blanket, just mm-hmm. nature intended. And that movie is directed by <laughs> his name is a wise guy. <laughs> what the this fuck? seems also weird and, because like who in the heck is like, hey, let me show you a movie that I'm not allowed to show at all. And like yeah. here, here's people having sex. Doesn't this entertain you? And she looks uncomfortable by it. Like who does this? Oh, it's even better. Cause the, the, the names for this movie. So the, a free ride or grass, I'm gonna call it a grass sandwich. So a grass sandwich is produced by gay Perry pictures and cinematographies by will be hard. That's so funny. <laughs> I fucking hate it here. Somebody in 1915 had a sense of humor and it's nine minutes long. <laughs> God. Anyway, back to Pearl. Cause I had to, I had the segue to talk about this abomination of a. <laughs> And but basically, the projectionist said, "Oh, I acquired this in France. This is what the Europeans are watching." And Pearl is just like, "Oh wow, I want to go to Paris. Will you take me to Paris? I want to be with the stars." And 
Pearl comments that she can't, that she wants to pursue her dreams, but she can't because she has to um, stay with the family. And then she wishes they would just die. Because, you know, that's normal. Um, her mom finds a program that Pearl took from the movie theater later on. And the two get into a fierce argument over dinner. It's like the next day. Uh, his, Pearl's mom, Ruth, says that Pearl is sick and will hurt people if she, le- if she ever leaves the farm. And they get into a slap and fight. And during said slap and fight, Pearl shoves her mom into uh, the kitchen hearth. And while yelling at her, she's I'm not basically saying, like, Pearl is basically standing up for herself. So I'm tired. Taking, I'm not taking your shit no more. I'm fucking leaving here. Meh. All this uh, whole altercation that comes to a head. And she ends up setting her mom on fire by accident, of course. Sure. Well, I don't think she meant to push her into the fire and expect her to get caught on fire. I don't and think that was planned. Does it just pot happened. Of water that corn in it and dumps it on her to put the fire out. <laughs> but she definitely pushed her down the cellar steps. Yeah, she most definitely just pushed funny her just down seeing the her cellar tumble. steps. <laughs> <laughs> she fucked her up. And before that, Ruth caught Pearl pushing her father and in, almost into the yes. pond with the alligator named Theta. Yep. Yeah, her baby, her baby. That's Pearl's baby. Lita, Lita. I, th- I Athita, seriously thought yeah. the name was Fida, as in like I feed you things, but it's T H E D A, mm-hmm. and I swear that sounds like something out of a. That's not a Greek name or a Greek myth. Me- uh, there's no one in Greek mythology with named Theta. Never mind. I thought that was a reference to something. Anyway, but yeah, she. Takes her dad over to that was actually earlier that day before the dinner. She takes her, rolled her dad to the um lake. Her dad, I swear, during this whole movie, obviously he can't move nor speak. He can only move his eyes and he, he's breathing. He just sits there and I just I want to see what's going on in his brain because he's like, my daughter is a psychopath and my wife is fucking crazy. What the fuck am I getting myself into being here? Just take me out of my misery. Because when she, when Pearl rolls him up to the lake, and you see the alligator, the look on his face is just like, she's trying to fucking kill me. She's literally trying to kill me. Mom catches her, saves her husband, cool. Rolls it back. And Pearl's just like, what did I ever do? What did I do? Because Pearl's obviously not normal. Dinner happens. Mama caught on fire. She takes a boiling pot of corn, splashes it on her. Those two are by accident. And as Bunyip said, pushing her down the stairs in the basement, that was on purpose. (laughs) That that, that looked like there was some hate behind that. So, and she leaves her mother downstairs and she leaves her dad in the kitchen and she flees to the movie theater. Where then she uh, decides to have sex with the projectionist. In that next morning, the projectionist drives Pearl back to the farm, as she's there to prepare for an aud- for the audition. And when he pulls up, he is kind of disturbed by the fact that there's a maggot-infested roasted pig that is sitting on the porch of said house from the day before. And I'm like, that happened in one day? Wow, that's a lot. And he's just like, oh, okay. And Pearl told him. Yeah, she like tells him to wait outside while she cleans up the kitchen a little bit, moves her dad to a different room, and then he gets in there, and then she's like, oh, yeah, there was a mess in the kitchen. I just had to clean it up. Also, let's go upstairs and do it. Yeah, and he's weirded out. like, and he hears yes, the thumping noise. noise. He's like, "I'm sorry, I I can't concentrate like with that thumping noise. What is that?" It's like, it's just my dog in the basement. He was he was acting up, so I just had to keep him down there. I was like, all right. And then I think they go to the barn after this. 
They do. They go to the barn and he's, and he's, he's introducing him to all the animals. And he's kind of weirded out. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go. And she's like, did I do something wrong? He's like, no, I'm just, I'm just on the outside. Go. Yeah. But on the inside, he's like, you said you had a dog in the basement. And then when I asked you what your dog's name was, you're like, you know, we don't, we don't have a yeah. dog. A dog. <laughs> exactly. But this is one of those moments with Pearl where you kind of do feel bad. She's like, what did I do wrong? I'm like, uh, outside the fact she there's dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> she's like, but he's like, oh, no, you did nothing wrong. Not everything's fine. She's like, but you changed. And then she's like, I feel emotions deeply. What happened? What did I do? And he's like, I'm just going to go. And she started screaming. He's like, what did I do wrong? And he's like, Pearl, you're scaring me. He's like, and he decides to go off to his car because he's getting the fuck out. <laughs> and when he gets to his car, he gets in, starts the car, and Pearl comes up. She turns around to see because he hears Pearl come walking up. He turns around, Pearl's not there, and he turns back, and she's holding a, that said pitchfork, her favorite weapon. It's a pitchfork, and she's like, "I um, God, what was the line she said?" Um, like when she sneaks up to this driver's side and kills him. Yeah, when she stabs him, yeah. Oh, dude, I don't remember. I can't remember. She says something along the line. I can't remember. She says something along the lines of like, I deserve a life that I, I, she kind of says that a very similar line to what Maxine said in the first one. It's like, star. I deserve a life that. Huh? Look, she says, I'm a star. Oh, that's what she says? Cool. I'm a star. And then she stabs him with a pitchfork. Well, cool. And he gets out of the car, falls to the ground, and then she stabs him, the pitchfork again, in the face, in the throat. And kills him. And then she pushes the car and the corpse into the pond. <laughs> it's the same car that <laughs> they that they out. see in the first movie. And the alligator eats. It's it's feeding time for Ida. Yeah, it's feeding time. Uh, then from there, she dresses up her father, and then, well. She kills him. She she kills her father, but she does it in a way where she's feel where she's like, I'm doing you basically, I'm doing you a favor. I'm putting you on your misery. Mm-hmm. And does it in front of this panicking canary in her cage. Yeah. She sure does it in front of the bird. Then Pearl arrives at the church where the audition's being held for those dance for those dance opti- uh auditions for the troop. Mm-hmm. She gives her, uh, she meets up with her a sister-in-law, Misty, who is Howard's sister. And um, they're waiting in line and shit, and they're talking, and of course, Misty's like, oh my god, you're such a great friend. Because they end up switching spots because Misty's nervous to go in there while Pearl's like, I'm ready. I'm ready to fucking leave this popsicle stand. And Misty obviously has no fucking clue that there are a bunch of dead bodies at the, at the house. <laughs> Two dead bodies in the house and one bud dead body being nommed on by an alligator. So the audition happens with Pearl. She does her best dancing she's ever done in her goddamn life. And the judge is like, mm, it's giving a no. And Pearl's like, what? That's like the best dancing I ever did. And the judge is like, well, that's great, but you're not, you're not what we're looking for. You don't have the it factor. You're not like a little younger and like blonde. And Pearl loses her goddamn mind. I'm a star. I'm one, I, that's what I'm going to get that. I'm going to get one specially made for Christmas. The star on top of a Christmas tree. And it's going to have Pearl. And it's going to say, I'm a star. It fits, it fits with I'm the theme do, of your house. So it makes sense. Why you would get <laughs> it, it does fit the theme of, the house, of my house. 
Nothing but fucking <laughs> horror memorabilia everywhere. Ah, oh, it's a it's a treasure. I'm not hating on it. I actually really love that house. Yeah. Even the oh, creepy so ass clown animatronic. Oh, animatronics. There's two downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yuck. But Merle does the audition, fails, and cries, cries uncontrollably. Missy goes and does her audition. She sees Pearl afterward, and you never really find out if Missy got it or not. That's the weird thing. You never find out for sure, for sure, if she got it. So from there. Misty and Pearl go back to her house and they and while Misty intends to con- console her sister-in-law in the kitchen Pearl makes this lengthy confession to Misty confessing everything confessing resentment for her husband which is Misty's brother who came from a privileged background but insisted that the couple remain on the family's farm and attempt, and admits she was relieved when she miscarried their child. And I'm like, damn, Pearl. Because apparently she didn't want to have kids. She didn't want to stay with the family. She wanted to go out and live the world. And she further confesses her feelings for uh, feelings of insecurity and pleasure she takes in inflicting pain. Oof, and to taking the lies of her parents and the projectionist. Pearl then manipulates a, a her sister in law into confessing that she won the audition over Pearl. So with that, what Wes says here, I don't think I don't think Misty got it. But Pearl's like, no, you got it. But Misty's like, no, Pearl. I. She's like, no, you got it. It's fine. You, you got it. You got it. And then Missy's just like, yeah, I got it. I don't think Missy got got the audition or won, uh, beat Pearl in that, personally. But Pearl needed someone to blame. Um, I don't have much to add to this theories of yours. I mean, do you, I mean, do you, do you, does it give that vibe though that Missy didn't get it? I think so, because Mitzi did say that she didn't win, and then Pearl's like, no, no, you won. And I think it's because she sees Mitzi as matching uh, matching the young blonde all-American type. And it's like, of course she'd get it. Yeah. And then she's like, you're not going to tell nobody, are you? He's like, no, no, of course not. You're not going to tell anybody. I was like, no, 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 of course not. She like leaves the house, and then it's a wide shot. I would have been like, yeah, and she, cause it, was, it was funny, because... The girl's like, you're not gonna tell anyone, are you? And Missy's like, nah, nah. I would have been like, not tell them what? Tell people what? I don't know nothing. I don't know shit, Pearl. Girl, you're my best friend. <laughs> your parent, your parents are on vacay. They're like on vacay, girl. For the restie of my short life. <laughs> bestie for the restie. Bestie better than the restie. And, yeah. and then uh, Missy uh-huh. makes a break for it. <laughs> Missy makes a fucking break for it. Fucking trips while Pearl's chasing her down the driveway with a goddamn axe. It's a axe. really short chase scene. And and I don't mean like in duration. I just mean like how Mitzi is running and yeah. then Pearl doesn't have to walk or walk very fast until after Mitzi trips. And then she's like, mm-hmm. oh, I can catch up with her now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be real with you. Pearl is not hard to take out. Misty could have gotten away from Pearl. Like, literally. She could have took the bike or got the axe and axed Pearl down or something. Like, she could have gotten away. Pearl's not that vicious. She's maybe, what, one, uh, 100, around 100 pounds, maybe a little more soaking wet? Like, come on. Come on. Pearl has the element of surprise. I will give her that. That's what she took out of the productionist. Because she surprised him by giving him, by having him turn around, turn back, and stabbed him. She got the element of surprise there. And then her parents, her father obviously wasn't going to put up a fight. Her mom was by accident, except for pushing down the stairs. 
the only person she technically killed were really the perfectionist. Everybody but her mom, pretty much. Well, she didn't fully kill her mother. She let her die, but she didn't do all that stuff on purpose. <laughs> so, um, Misty dies. And then you see shots of Pearl dismembering Misty's body and feeding her to the crocodile. And those scenes were, you would think that would have grossed me out, but it was so saturated and so ridiculous and almost cartoony. It didn't. I was like, what the fuck? Is Pearl losing her goddamn mind? Yes. So she feeds. Yes. She, yes. So she feeds her sister-in-law to her to her alligator before going into the basement and laying with her deceased, laying with her mom. Because she needs comfort. So she imagines that her mom is still alive, but obviously she's not. Uh, from there, Pearl then takes her mom up the stairs, puts her at the dinner table, and. Pearl tries to make the best of what she's got in life. So she decides to atone for her crimes by creating a comfortable home for Howard when he turns from the war. Next morning, Howard arrives unexpectedly and comes into the house looking for Pearl. Pearl? And he walks into the kitchen and sees the bodies of his in-laws and the pig. And then Pearl walks in to greet him. And then you have five, like five minutes of that, of that demented, of that freaking smile. Now, that is the end of the movie there, because the end of the movie is just her, Pearl's face smiling. And as the, and as it goes, as the time goes on, her smile becomes more and more insane. And the story behind that is they never said cut. So Mia Goth kept going. <laughs> and then they look, then they watch back on, they're like, wow, this kind of works. Especially how the screen f- style of fading the black is just like a circle shrinking. Yeah, I like almost expected tunes. like in the bottom right corner, it would just like create another circle and you just see three mice going three weeks later. Oh my God. <laughs> and they have a happy family. It's like, here's the post credit scene. It's a happy family, but they have a secret. Mm-hmm. So that's the end of Pearl. Thoughts? Actually, I may need a minute to collect thoughts. Okay. Housekeeper? The movie. The movie. <laughs> I mean, uh, not gonna lie, I do like X more than I like Pearl. <laughs> but I'm still looking forward to Maxine. Yeah. Which is a sequel to X. Yep. Pearl is it completes a, the trilogy. Yeah. Pearl is a prequel. Um. Oh. I'm sorry about that. My phone's rolling off. I don't know if the mic picked that up. Um. So I mean, I can't. I can't really put my thoughts together right now. I feel really scrambled. But I, I, I still like the movie. It was so great movie. Would I watch it again? Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, Pearl. Wait, did you have extra thoughts, Zio? Oh. oh, yes, I did. Love this movie. It's great. I love it. Actually, I like this movie more than I like X. Because it just, it's just so fucking bad shit. Camp. The camp. The stupidity of it all. Uh, yeah, no. I enjoyed this movie a little more than I did X. And that's saying something because X is good. Just that five-minute monologue at the end. Honestly... I always say it, if A24 wasn't 
wasn't banking on everything everywhere all at once for the Oscars that year, mm-hmm. that following year, they should have put in Mia Goth for Pearl for that monologue alone. Because I think Mia Goth would have gotten an Oscar. Because it she was serving. She gave a performance for this role. And I loved every minute of it. But all yeah. right, so definitely has some th- similar themes to X in regards to fame, except Pearl wants to pursue fame to the like detriment of everything else and everyone around her. And even though her mom, Ruth, is a hard ass, she's right about one thing, like dealing with what you've got, because Pearl did actually want to kill them and wanted to leave them all behind. And Ruth is like, sometimes you yeah. have to stick with what you're stuck with. Because Ruth is like, I don't want to have to wipe my husband's ass, and I don't want to have to run this farm, but I have to. Um, oh, what else was there? I guess mainly the stardom thing. Like a lot of people want stardom and fame. Mainly, me. My theory is that they, because they don't have a much attention at home. Like they don't get enough love and attention from their family, so they think that maybe fame will make them feel better. But fame isn't really a skill. Like it, it can it can happen, but it's rare. And Pearl eventually accepts that like she's just gonna have to stay where she is because she's not gonna be able to leave. But uh, rating, oh, rating yeah. Um Oh my god, that's a good question. Goose. How, How many, many geese? gooses? How many geese? There you go. How Head many geese? dangling geeses. Well, hang dangling geeses. <laughs> For me, five out of five. Five out of five. Dead goose. Geese. Geese. Five out of five dead geese. I'll go with 4.5 like I did with X. They feel kind of the same to me. I do like Pearl slightly more. Um, But yeah, 4.5. I especially like the edits that they do where it's like it cuts from one scene to the next, but it does it three times back and forth. And then that one where they they do it back and forth four times. So like, oh, a surprise. And how they really captured the theme of the late nineteen tens and early nineteen twenties cinema. And most of the movies that I've seen lately is usually like, here's what the fifties and later were like. And then this one's like, oh, this is nineteen eighteen. It's a, it's a little different than what you're used to, and they made it look really nice. So um, I want to give this one a four, just because um, it didn't hold my attention as much as as X did. Um, again, I still love this movie. I'll watch it again. I felt like the pacing was off. That was the only. That's like the only um, critique I have. Mm-hmm. Was that the pacing was kind of off for me in certain parts. But yeah, that's about it. Like, I don't have any other complaints. I thought it was a great film. The The monologue is fantastic. I I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I do feel for um, Pearl, especially like whenever... Well, I mean, I get why he acted that way. Right, and he's like, no, I just want to, I want to leave. Like, I get it. I, I perfectly understand. I, yeah. I can put myself in his shoes, but as someone who can read someone's energy, and immediately know yep. like the, like, like the change in, in um, how how they interact with with you and stuff like that. Like, I'm able to clock it in the like the second that it happens. I immediately go into go into the what did I do wrong? Yeah, that's exactly what. Yeah, like what did I do wrong? Her, like yeah. like well you're acting different. What did I do wrong? And it could even be like a change of tone in text messaging, right? Like 
especially if you know like how people like usually talk um in text message and then just kind of goes into a different direction of like how they they talk to you through like no i autumn i clock that shit in and um you can count that as trauma or whatever the fuck you want to count it as anxiety all that good shit but yeah no like i i dude as soon as she said that i was like oh my god i feel that dude but i mean also yeah i saw a, a fucking riding pig corpse on your front porch and you're acting kind of neurotic so i kind of want to leave um yeah <laughs> so yeah i get it but yeah no it's a four it's four for me which comes to the average of uh for this one uh another 4.5 Word. Yeah. 4.5 again get it and again, this is one that is on Paramount Plus as well as I think it will be on Netflix if it isn't already. But if not, Paramount Plus has it. So thank you all for listening to today's episode. Catch us next time as we talk about another A24 horror film. And this one is going to be Oh, which one was it? Oh, yeah. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Oh, God. That movie. For the next episode. Oh, yeah. I need to write the whole. I'm going to. I am going to recite that podcast speech that happens in that movie. Y'all going to learn. Y'all going to learn today. <laughs> Me and Housekeeper watched that movie in theaters and we felt see. I felt seen. Yeah. I felt I heard. Felt seen. <laughs> I was like, what? What? Is this this is amazing? So catch us next time as we just fucking watch and rave about body. Oh, I will about bodies, bodies, bodies. So well, my favorite then. people in there. So right, I think it's great. <laughs> Ugh, love H. Then the week out. So the last three weeks is going to be. One movie that we love, one movie that some of us love, while others probably will not. <laughs> that was mentioned. That was one of the films mentioned earlier on, either I think last episode for X. And then, of course, the new one, the newer A24 films to round out the month. But unless, catch us next time. Let's talk about bodies, bodies, bodies. Until then, Goodbye. bye. bye.